right. All right, my name is Kat Friesen. I am a certified athletic therapist. I am working out of Insayu training. And today we're gonna talk about scapular stabilization. So the main reason I wanna to talk to everybody about scapular stabilization is that due to the current lifestyles of most people, we're starting to get some really bad habits going. If you think of what we're doing, everything is in front of us right now. Whether it's our phones, whether it's our computers, everything is forward. So we're starting to get that lovely forward head poke. We're starting to get internally rotated shoulders and we're starting to get that really sexy hump back going. So we're gonna start with three different exercises and we're gonna go through different progressions. So it's available for all levels and I want you guys to try it out. Let me know what you think. So first off, we're gonna start with some protraction and retraction. So first off, we're gonna start with some protraction and retraction. So first step, I'm gonna get you to come to the side. So I want you to go against a wall. Have your hands just below shoulder height. Keep your elbows not locked out, but pretty straight the whole time. What you're gonna do is you're gonna press out as far as you can, and then squeeze those shoulder blades together. So pressing out as far as you can, squeezing them together. Now if this one is feeling like I got this. This isn't hard. We can increase activation of our lovely shoulders by adding a resistance band. Put it just around your forearms, doesn't matter where. So again, make sure there's just a little bit of resistance. You're keeping your arms about shoulder width apart. And we're doing that same movement. So we're gonna be pressing out as far as you can, squeezing together. So you'll notice that as I'm doing it, the tendency will be to bring your shoulders up, really focus on keeping those shoulders down and back through both movements. The other tendency is that you're really gonna wanna bend your elbows into a push-up position. Try to resist it. Okay. Our next progression, so we're doing five progressions. Let's leave this one there for you is a single arm scapular protraction retraction. So I've got my purple band. I've attached it to a TRX. You can attach it to anything that works for you. It doesn't have to be higher. It can also just be in a door or any other attachment. So I'm gonna slip my hand in here, have a nice grip. With this one, you wanna make sure that your shoulders are staying square forward. Make sure that you're not rotating your torso in any direction. Step back till there's a bit of tension on it. And you're going to do the same movement. So you're squeezing your shoulder back and down, allowing it to come all the way forward. So make sure, again, this is coming from your back. You don't want it to be coming from your elbow or anything like that. Really focusing on pulling it back and down. Our next progression is just going to be on the floor. So it's going to be a push-up position, like any other. This one is called a scat push-up. So you want your hands just under your shoulders. Doesn't matter for your feet position, as long as you're stable base. Tuck your pelvis under. And you guys are going to do the same movement. Again, if you want more of a challenge, we can add a band. You can use any band you want, but keep in mind that this is for shoulder and you're working on a lot of little muscles. So just because you feel like you can do a really intense band, start low. Same thing, same position, shoulder width apart. Just like that. Wall slides are sneakily a lot more difficult than you realize. We've got a few prerequisites to try before you even get to the wall. First one, you can go to get a mat if you want to, or you can just do it on the ground. I'm gonna start with my knees bent. Tilt your hips so that your low back is nice and flat on the floor, and hands are coming out. So if this position you're already getting a really good stretch, try holding this for a while first. Try different positions, see how you feel. But the point of these movements is that you want as much in contact with the floor as possible. So eventually, you're going to start 
sliding, keeping as much in contact as possible. Try to keep your head in a nice neutral forward. Try not to be turning your head to see where your arms are. And sliding up and down. Our next step, if this is feeling way too simple, way too boring, you can grab a trusty foam roller. So with this one, I like to use a full size one just because you can actually stabilize your full torso on it a lot easier. You can make it work with a shorter one, but just make sure that your head is supported. So first we'll do a passive version. So scoot your bum down, get your head nice and supported, and you're just gonna hold this guy. A lot of people are gonna find that this is enough of a stretch that you just need to hold this one for a while, and that's fine. If you wanna try the different positions again, try it out. If you're feeling like the passive one is not enough, try making it active. Try doing the full slides all the way up and all the way down. All right, now we can move to the wall. So we feel like we've mastered the first three progressions. Next step is trying it against the wall. The further away your feet are from the wall, the easier it will be to get that low back flat on the wall. So you're gonna get your hands and your head right against the wall. If you have a ponytail, you might wanna take it out. And with as many contact points as possible, you're gonna start sliding up and down as much movement as possible. So the tendency will be to either take your wrists off, get your elbows off, your head will come forward. Try to resist those and try to have as many contact points as possible. So if you're feeling good about that movement with your shoulder blade, we're going to add a resisted movement. Grabbing our trusted kitty bam once again. What I want you to do is holding it at about shoulder width apart. You're going to bring your arms up as high as you can and back down. So the tendency will be for you to raise your shoulder blades up as you're coming up. I want you to resist that and make sure that you're really keeping your shoulder blades down for the whole movement. So again, the tendency will be for people to want to go for a really high band for this one. I highly recommend starting light because you're only going to be going about shoulder width apart and it's to really increase the activation through that shoulder complex. So we're going to go over to the gym area. So first one we're going to do is a two-arm row. So again, make sure that your shoulder position is in a nice spot. Shoulders are back and down. So you're gonna row all the way through. I need to go closer. <laughs> okay, so that's our two-arm row. If you wanna switch things up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> We can do a single arm. So again, it's the same issues as our single arm protraction, retraction. So you really want to make sure that your shoulders are staying square, make sure that your torso isn't rotating as you're doing it. And you're rowing through. So next progression, let's move this one off the first bit, it's just a bent over row. So for a bench over row, you're gonna have the same knee and hand on the bench. With this one, position is really important. Make sure that your back is in a really nice neutral position as you're setting up. So your shoulder is going right over your wrist. Knee should be right under your hip. And make sure that your back is nice and strong. Make sure that you're not arching it one way or the other. You're gonna do a simple row. So the last exercise in our progression for rows we're gonna do a single arm plank row with the help of a lovely Jaguar band. And in our same nice strong plank position, we're gonna do some nice rows. And the tendency will be to rotate your body, try to resist it. A nice strong core, 